Welcome everyone. Uh, we have an interview here today taking place at uh, French GRI here in Paris. I'm delighted to have uh, Larry Young from Baby Barry Barry Real Estate with us today. Um, Larry, thanks of all, uh, first of all for agreeing for this interview. Uh, first, could you explain a little bit, just about a minute or so, what are your activities at Baby Barry Barry? Well, thanks for uh, having me here first of all. Um, so, I am the head of the International Investment Group at BNP Paribas, uh, based in France. I'm English, but I've been here for 15 years. Um, so, I run the cross-border uh, investment teams um, with a headquarter in Paris, and we're located in seven countries um, across the globe, uh, so main European cities and also in the Middle East and Asia. And the main role is to bring investors into the European markets, um, but I also, um, before this, uh, this new role, did uh, 10 years of bringing international clients into the French investment market. Okay, well great, thank you for that uh, explanation. Uh, I think the first question I'm going to start is, uh, you know, you're looking at the political implication that's happened for the past two years or so uh, in, in, uh, in Europe and Italy being the most recent case just a few days ago. Um, what are your thoughts on the consequences of these changes uh, for the French I think um, the, 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 main, the, main, the main thing obviously that's happened in the last two years is the, the election of Emmanuel Macron and that certainly had a very positive effect, effect um, on, the, on the French economy, uh, on the French property market um, and a, a real stabilising effect on the, on the whole of, uh, of Europe um, and as you mentioned obviously there are worries with what's happening in Italy and there are questions on Brexit, there's other um, political uncertainties but I think in general I feel we're in a better place than we were about a year and a half ago when there was a whole number of elections um, which uh, could have gone one way or the other so France in general is, uh, is, is, is in a it's in a place it hasn't been for the last I'd say 15 years and in terms of politics the economy um, it's, uh, it's, in a, it's in a good place. Oh, good, well good to hear. <laughs> um, Another question actually could be focusing this one on the yields, which is a, a big topic of conversation in France. You know, the yields are extremely low, and that's something that you know everyone sort of really agrees on. I mean, my question for you is: uh, Are you expecting a sudden change, one way or the other, regarding this question? Or expecting a continuous of the trend we've been seeing for the past few years? I think um, it's in general we've seen um, the real prime yields begin to, to stabilize, um, and there's obs obviously. Some, some worries about interest rate uh, rising in the, in the US, uh, in the UK, in the Eurozone. Um, but I think if we look more specifically, um, it, it really depends on the different market. Uh, I mean, if I start with uh, the office market, yes, yields are, are low, but there's still um, a good amount of um, interest uh, in, the, in that market, especially because you have some strong rental growth and some very low vacancy rates. Um, logistics is uh, in France and across Europe probably one of the hottest sectors and there's a, there's a huge amount of appetite for that and we could even see some, some compression in those yields whereas retail and almost for some of the same reasons mainly the, the big e-commerce story um, is suffering um, a bit but again even then when you look closely into the retail market high street retail is completely different from, um, from shopping centre and other parts so in general, yields beginning to probably stabilise with the, uh, the, the general uh, the, the rise in interest rates, um, but different for different sectors. And what's important, and going back to the, the, the macro and the feel good factor, there is still a, a good weight of money um, trying to get into French uh, real estate. Okay, and actually linking to the PNC you've given, I think my next question is that where do you see being the best opportunities being asset class or specific region in France for the next 18 months to two years? I think what we're seeing is uh, there's some very interesting projects and very interesting events coming up. Um, project, for instance, you've got the Grand Paris, um, the huge uh, infrastructure uh, network across the Paris region, which is a bit like a, 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 a cross rail in London, but over 30 years. Um, so that plus some important events, notably the Olympics um, coming up, means that uh, if you're looking especially to the north of Paris, where you have not just the new transport links, but new infrastructure going in for the Olympics, we're seeing areas, for instance, Saint-Ouen, Clichy, uh, suburbs to the north of Paris, really improving significantly. 
Um, so I would say in the right area, um, office uh, development despite yields being low. Um, in central Paris, like I mentioned before, on the office market yields are so, uh, sorry, vacancy rates are so low um, that again, a bit of value out there could be interesting. Um, retail markets, uh, it's very much, as I said, two speeds. The, high, the really core high street is still working well. Very big shopping centres still seem to attract um, interest. Between the two is more difficult, and that's really where it's, uh, the, the, so the Amazon wrecking ball, unfortunately, which is happening across Europe has happened. Um, logistics, as mentioned, um, it, it's a real, it's a very hot um, uh, subject. Um, the yields have come down, um, and now are, are some, some, sometimes under five percent. So uh, we are obviously very positive about the sector, but it, the, the, finding the opportunities is probably more difficult. Um, in regions, um, yields again have come down, um, and I think um, you really need to focus on regional cities that are seeing some of this infrastructure, like I mentioned before, Bordeaux, where they've opened the TGV, for instance, um, uh, and also really the kind of act from Lille down through Lyon, uh, ex Marseille, um, for, for good office and logistics. Okay, well, thanks for that answer. Um, next question I have is, <clears throat> Relating to more though the, the key words and the key trends I've been hearing for the past few years, uh, crypto, prop tech. Now these new these new trends sorry, are, are really shaping up uh, the real estate industry and really seeing some important disruption. Sure. In your point of view, it, it, are we hyping this a little bit too much, or is there really a future for these new things in the real estate market? Um, I mean, I say it's a bit of both. <laughs> I think there has been a lot of a lot of hype over um, over some of these technologies, and, and there's similarities with what we're seeing in the property industry now, with what we saw uh, in the beginning of the, the whole dot com industry. There was a lot of hype. Um, there were companies that worked. There were companies that didn't. There were some big corrections. But what's happened now um, is there to stay. The the, the internet. Um, the uh, dot-com companies, the ones that have worked there to stay. And I'd say that's similar with some of these uh, big service office providers. Um, there's a huge amount out there and the way people use an office uh, or the way people use a, a shopping center or hotel is definitely changing fundamentally. Will all the companies that are doing these work? Probably not. I think some of them will, uh, will, will work and, and carry on. Some of them will. So, as I say, uh, a little, a little, a little bit of both uh, in the in, in the reply on that. Okay. Oh yeah, makes sense. Uh, I think one more question that I'll have for you, uh, maybe the hardest to answer, but what keeps you awake at night? What keeps me awake at night? Uh, my children's education. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think um, it's um, the the the. You mentioned Italy. I think that is a bit of a worry. Um, I think uh, on the some other geopolitical events. Um, you know, for instance, uh, what's happening in, the, in, in North Korea looks a lot better, but you know, if, if you asked me six months ago, that might be keeping me, 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 me up a bit. Um, on the economy, you know, big hikes in, uh, in interest rates, hopefully it'll be, it'll be more slow and gradual, um, and also some of the level of debt, um, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, some of what's happening in the, in the US in terms of uh, how the uh, president's reacting um, on a political event, I think those are the, a few of the things that would. But I guess what's important to mention is uh, we still got to realise that this is one of the only times in, uh, in, 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 in a long time where we have all the big global economies growing um, at different rates, but growing. Uh, and as mentioned before, um, yes, political uncertainty, but we've gone past a good period of elections and there's at least a very good stable French government, good stable German government, which are the sort of the key the key parts to Europe. Here to stay in place, yes. Yes. Perfect. Larry, thank you very much for asking those questions. It was a pleasure.